This is One on One. Hi, Steve Arbaro coming to you from Newark, New Jersey. This is the North Ward Center. We just finished a very important discussion on the subject of autism. It's actually technically called autism, a different way of thinking. One person has been thinking, talking, writing, and helping in the field of autism is uh, Dr. Kate Fisk, author of a fascinating book called Autism in the Family, Understanding and Supporting Parents and Siblings. Also the Associate Director of? The Douglas Development and Disability Center. At the wonderful Rutgers University. Yes. Doctor, the main theme of your book is? The main theme of my book is focusing on the experiences of parents and siblings uh, who are raising together a, a child with autism. And the, the, what makes this book different from other texts out there, because there's a lot of books that focus on parents' experiences, is that it's written specifically for professionals who are working with those family members. Uh, in my career, I um, often run into family, uh, family members who will express that maybe they don't get the level of empathy or compassion from the professionals that they're working with that they would like. And so I've done a lot of work with the professionals I work with, the young professionals, mm -hmm. graduate students, to help build that sense of empathy and understanding by having parents come and speak to them about their experiences. But I really wanted to take that, those parent panels, and reach a much broader stage. Um, and so I wrote the book for professionals in any field working with individuals with autism, so teachers, psychologists, medical professionals, to help them better understand from diagnosis through adulthood the impact that autism has on parents' stress levels, mental health, and well-being. Describe it. Describe the level of stress we're talking about. It is, um, by all accounts, research and from parents themselves, it's a level of stress that's beyond any other parenting group. Um, and it's not a huge surprise given what you're talking about with autism, right? These are children who have difficulty communicating their wants and needs. These are uh, uh, children who don't have difficulty necessarily connecting with their parents, but connect in different ways than other children do. Um, and also there is just um, oftentimes challenging behavior. So a lot of parents will talk about aggressions or disruptions, both of which can contribute to a much higher level uh, of stress for parents. There's also, sorry for interrupting. Yeah. I've often wondered uh, when I've seen parents with a child who it appears to me, but again, my doctorate's not in the same field as, as your area, but I will say with a child who, I, who is dealing with autism, is there an embarrassment factor? There certainly is. You know, and, and you know, we're talking about a broad spectrum here. And not always. I'm just saying, could exactly. there be? That's there, the way there I certainly should have could be. That. You know, these are parents who are and siblings. The embarrassment factor plays out there as well. For the siblings. For the you know, for siblings being embarrassed about their brother or sister's behaviors in public, right? So mm. if they're going out into public, into a restaurant or to a party, and their sibling behaves differently than um, maybe uh, other children do, that can be a source of embarrassment for siblings, and they talk about that. As adults, I have adult siblings who will reflect back on their childhood and talk about, you know, feelings of embarrassment, but also other more complicated and positive feelings, like being very proud um, of sure. what it is that their brother or sister has been, uh, has been able to accomplish, but certainly those feelings of embarrassment. But, but what well. is it? It's interesting. You talked about empathy and compassion. Can you teach it? That is our goal. So I work with graduate students at Rutgers University to help build up, um, uh, to help teach professionals those uh, uh, pieces of empathy, compassion, what it looks like from a professional who is exhibiting those behaviors towards somebody. Um, I also collaborate with Bridget Taylor uh, at Alpine here in New Jersey as well. She's working on a similar curriculum for her staff to build that sense of empathy, compassion, um, so that parents feel more supported. They feel more hurt, mm. essentially. I think that oftentimes we're so focused on the child with autism and the work we need to do with them that we're not listening to parents' experiences and what they have to say about the emotional piece of raising a child with autism, mm -hmm. um, which is, is pretty significant. The other issue that came up in our panel discussion that, that you will uh, understand quite well is the urban-suburban dichotomy in terms of diagnosis, treatment, et cetera. There's a model program that you make reference to in the city of Newark. Sure. What is yep. that program? It is, um, it's a new model preschool program for children with autism in Newark Public Schools. So Newark Public Schools has committed to developing this model preschool program using the science of applied behavior analysis, ABA, to teach their students. ABA is, for those of us mm -hmm. not, uh, who don't understand the field very well, 
ABA is? It's the science of breaking down behavior into small, observable pieces and um, teaching the skills that we want to see. So we're, we talk about social skills. That's so broad. Mm. And we're really bringing it down to how do I teach a child to engage in eye contact with somebody else, right? And maintain eye contact in a conversation. How about listening? Uh, sure, you can certainly. Is that part of the? It could be. Yeah, it could be any any behavior that you would want to target. You just say that the key to it is really defining what the behavior is that you want to see, and then using the basic principles of behavior um, that are in our everyday environment for you and me, um, rewards and consequences that might maintain those behaviors over time. And so, so what's we the program, do though? I want to understand that. So what? in the preschool? Yeah. So in the preschool, we're looking at that the, the the obviously the youngest learners within Newark Public Schools and identifying what are the very early skills that they need to develop that will make them successful as they continue through Newark Public Schools. And in the, the hope is that this program will continue to grow as these children age. So it's not intended to be just a preschool program. Um, over time, it will expand. Um, but that's where we'll start. And we're really at that age looking at kind of the learning readiness skills that these, um, these children need, right? So how do they um, you know, learn to listen um, mm. to a teacher, attend? to peers um, and uh, engage in those um, educational skills that make so many children ready to learn, right? But we want to make sure that we're doing it in a setting that um, really embodies uh, the science of ABA, also in a very naturalistic way. Naturalistic meaning? Naturalistic meaning we're looking at um, those skills in the context of play and education, right? So um, we want to make sure that we're not just kind of teaching these very young children in kind of these tabletop tasks, that we're taking the science of ABA as it's meant to be, um, spanning across both educational settings, but also these more naturalistic settings where they're mm. learning how to interact with peers, teachers, parents, um, in the settings where they would engage in those. Maybe. Before we finish, sure. you wrote this book because, on a personal level, and not simply as an academic, as a scholar. Why did you write it personally? I wrote that book personally because of the families that I've worked with. Is it personal for you now? It is. I mean, certainly the, the work that I do with families and the work that I do for their children, um, I have a hard time not kind of, you know, emphasizing. Talk about empathy. Exactly, <laughs> right? right? And, and so I sometimes kind of have to put my on my scientist hat and look at it very objectively, but I um, have a tendency to kind of connect. And that's what I want to make sure that I'm teaching my students mm -hmm. to do, whether it's when they're working directly with a family or whether they're working in a classroom in a training situation, um, that we're, we're building those um, skills as well. Well done. Thank right. you, doctor. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 30 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by RWJ Barnabas Health, the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey, the Northward Center, New Jersey Sharing Network, the Russell Berry Foundation, Suez, and by Wells Fargo. Promotional support provided by Insider NJ, and by Meadowlands Chamber. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.